It was a beautiful day on the island of Soap. Thomas was taking Sir Topham Hatt to the new Sewell construction site. Sir Topham Hatt had given the land for the new school. Thomas's friends were all busy preparing the site. A school is the proper use for this land, Sir Topham Hatt said proudly. Let me show you the football field, said Miss Jenny. Buster was having a wonderful time rolling the earth flat. It'll be a great football field, said Miss Jenny. Great, said Sir Topham Hatt. Alfie was happily digging foundation trenches for the school library. It will be a splendid library, said Miss Jenny. Splendid, said Sir Topham Hatt. And this will be the swimming pool, she said. She explained that Oliver had to dig carefully. Obviously, a swimming pool must have very straight sides, she said. Obviously, said Sir Topham Hatt. He was impressed. Soon, his visit was over. He was on his way home. Max was becoming impatient. Hurry up, he scowled. But Oliver would not be hurried. <laughs> he was determined to dig carefully. Suddenly, his bucket hit something hard. He slowly scraped away the earth. Hurry up there, roared Max. But I found something, cried Oliver. Look! Rubbish, sniffed Max. It might be important, said Oliver's operator. I'll call Miss Jenny, said the foreman. And Miss Jenny called Sir Topham Hatt. And Sir Topham Hatt called the experts. Amazing, said the expert with the red mustache. This is a dinosaur bone. A dinosaur bone, said Ned. Dinosaurs were animals that lived a long time ago, said Miss Jenny. Their bones are all that's left. Well, Oliver, said the expert with the fuzzy beard. I wonder if you'd do some more digging for us. Yes, sir, beamed Oliver. He was excited. Soon, the experts roped off the area. Oliver changed over to his smallest chisel. This job called for delicate digging. Soon, Oliver found some more bones. And some more. Hmm. And some more. He had uncovered the skeleton of a whole dinosaur. Everyone cheered. This is an important day for the island of Sodor, said Sir Topham Hatt. Thanks to Oliver's careful digging, said Miss Jenny. It makes me proud to be an excavator, said Alfie. A man with a camera even took Oliver's picture. The next morning, Thomas brought Sir Topham Hatt to the yards. It seems we have a celebrity here, he said. It's Oliver, said Ned. With his dinosaur, said Jack. The front page, no less, said Miss Jenny. Oliver was proud.
friends were excited. He was taking them to the warehouse. Jack couldn't wait to get to work. Hurry, Thomas, he called. I'm going as fast as I can, chuffed Thomas. Don't mind Jack, called Alfie. He's always in a hurry. Soon, Thomas had delivered Jack and Alfie to the warehouse. Miss Jenny warned them all about the very busy site. So you must be careful, she said. Anyone causing an accident will be sent back to the yard immediately, added the foreman. Ned was worried. He sometimes caused accidents, but he didn't want to be sent back to the yard. Don't worry, said his operator. I'll make sure you don't back into anything. Everyone was working very carefully. Ned's operator guided him around corners and through the stacks of bricks. Oh boy, said Ned proudly. He was having fun. Jack was having fun too, but he wasn't being careful at all. Slow down, Jack, Kelly Boom. You'll have an accident. Not me, Jack shouted cheerfully. Thomas could see Jack was being careless. He hoped his friend wouldn't get into trouble. But Jack did get into trouble. He backed into a stack of roofing slate and smashed it into tiny pieces. Blistering buckets, said Jack. He looked around. No one had seen him break the slate. Not even his operator. Jack knew he had been naughty. But he didn't want to get sent back to the yard. So he filled his bucket full of gravel and drove away. Ned didn't see the broken slate and rolled right over. Ned! cried his operator. You've knocked over the slates! I didn't do it, protested Ned. It wasn't me. But there was nothing Ned could do. It was an accident. His operator would have to call Miss Jenny. It's not fair. It's not fair, grumbled Ned. Alfie pulled up just as Jack saw Ned driving slowly away. Where's Ned going? asked Jack. He knocked over some roofing slates in Alfie. Thomas is taking him back to the yard. Jack knew it was all his fault. What should he do? Alfie could see Jack was upset. What's wrong, he asked. But Jack didn't answer. He raced off without a word. Wait, Jack shouted. Wait! Miss Jenny, Ned didn't break the slate. I did. And Jack told her what he had done. Miss Jenny was cross. It was brave of you to own up, she said. But what am I to do with you? Send me back to the yard, said Jack said. And so she did. As Jack was being loaded on Thomas's low loader, he called to Ned. I'm sorry you got blamed for my accident. I should have owned up earlier. That's all right, said Ned. But I'm glad it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me, sang Ned as he steamed back to work. Good for you, Jack, Thomas called. Good for you. All the way back to the yard, Jack felt Deep down in his pistons, he knew he'd done the right thing.
It was a simmering summer day on the island of Seoul. The top of hat had sent Thomas to help Jack and his friends at the construction site. They were busy working on the foundations of the new community center. Patrick was pouring concrete for a new platform. Roasting radiators, it's hot, panted Jack. Makes my boiler ache, said Thomas. Out of the way, young'uns, he's Patrick. Someone important coming through. What makes you so important, huffed Jack? Concrete, rattled Patrick. We're important too, said Alfie. But I'm the most important, said Patrick. He's a bit cheeky, puffed Thomas, as he chuffed away. But Alfie and Jack were curious. Who was the most important? Jack couldn't wait to ask Byron. Is Patrick the most important, asked Jack. Nonsense, said Byron. Patrick can't pour his mushy concrete until I level the site. That makes me the most important. Alfie made a beeline for Oliver. Slow down, purred Oliver. What's got you racing around in this heat? Patrick said he was the most important, panted Alfie. Is that true? Oh, my no, said Oliver politely. Digging the foundations is the most important. Mm -mm. And that's what I do. Transport, boasted Nelson. Without transport, there wouldn't be any construction. That makes me the most important. Our operators, declared Ned. They're in charge of safety. They're definitely the most important. I give up, clattered Jack. They can't all be the most important, said Alfie. They were confused. When Thomas returned, he could see that everyone was talking about who was the most important. Even Max and Mom. I'm the most important, diesel Max. I am, boasted Monty. I can hold more in less time than anyone else. And before their operators could stop them, they were off to get even bigger loads. Max was getting the biggest load he could carry. More, boomed Max. So was Monty. More, boomed Monty. I think that's enough, said Oliver politely. More and hurry! If you say so. Max! Monty! Kelly called. Slow down! Thomas could see Max and Monty were headed for trouble. I'm the most important, said Max. I am, blasted Monty. I am, I am. Look out! shouted Patrick. <laughs> Flatten my fenders, shouted Monty. Not my fault, called Max. My beautiful concrete, moaned Patrick. My beautiful blue paint, moaned Thomas. Miss Jenny was cross when she heard the news. I'm very disappointed in you two, she said to Max and Monty. You've caused a lot of trouble. And look at poor Thomas. We were only trying to show who's the most important, groaned Max. You're all part of a team, said Miss Jenny. There's no such thing as most important. Not even Patrick, clattered Jack. Patrick, scolded Miss Jenny. Were you bragging about concrete again? I might have said something.
It was a foggy, foggy Halloween night. So Top of Hat had sent Percy to work with his friend Alvin. Percy was glad he would be with a friend on Halloween. Alfie was on a night job. He was helping mend the road through Maithwaite Forest. Percy had arrived during the workman's break. Kelly was going to tell a Halloween story. I hope it's not too spooky, said Percy. Me too, said Alfie. He didn't like being scared either. Rubbish, snarled Max. It's just a story, sneered Monty. Shh, said Jack. Then Kelly began. Once upon a time, there was an old steam truck. He was very cross. Someone had taken one of his headlamps. And everyone listened quietly as Kelly told the story of the one-eyed truck. And finally... The one-eyed truck chased the loader into the deepest, darkest part of the forest. Then what happened, asked Isabella. Luckily, the loader got away. But according to legend, the one-eyed truck still wanders the forest, blowing his whistle and looking for a headlamp, whispered Kelly. Maybe he wants yours. That was the best story yet, said Jack. I hope I never meet the one-eyed truck, gulped Alfie. Me too, cried Percy. Stuff and nonsense, rattled Monty. Break's over, said Kelly. Back to work. Percy liked working with Alfie. Alfie is small. So is Percy. Alfie is green. So is Percy. They were having a wonderful time. Max and Monty up to mystery. It's the one-eyed truck, cried Max. Scaredy, scaredy, teased Monty. Stop that, boom, Jack. Pick on someone your own size. Max and Monty just laughed. Later, Max and Monty had settled down. Take these loads to the tip in the forest, said the foreman, and be careful, it's very dark. Yes, sir, said Monty and Max, and they left. As they drove deeper into the forest, it got darker and darker. The woods were full of spooky shapes and shadows. It was very scary. Suddenly, Max and Monty didn't feel so brave. What was that? clattered Max. An owl, said Monty. I hope. And I, cried Max. I don't know, said Monty. It was just a fox. But Monty and Max didn't know that. They had just arrived at the dump when suddenly they heard a shrill whistle. Then they saw a single headlamp through the trees. It's the one-eyed truck, shouted Monty. They dumped their loads and raced away as fast as their wheels could carry them. He's after us, cried Max. It's a one-eyed truck, yelped Monty. There is no one-eyed truck, said Kelly. It's just a story, chuffed Alfie. Well, what's behind us then, said Monty. It's Thomas, said the foreman. Thomas, said Percy happily. Hello, Percy, called Thomas. Sir Topham Hatt sent me with some more freight cars. Monty and Max felt silly. They went a beautiful shade of red. But everybody else had a good laugh. Especially Percy and Ellie.
Thomas and Kelly had just arrived at the new library site. The wind's blowing hard, chuffed Thomas. Too hard, frowned Kelly. Strong winds are dangerous for a crane. The wind was blowing so hard that Jack and his friends could hardly get their work done. Kelly's crane arm didn't like the wind. Uh-oh, this is bad. Look out! cried Jack. But it was too late. Are you all right, Chuff Thomas? I think so, but is anyone else hurt? No, said Jack, but you've demolished the shed. Soon Kelly was back on Thomas's low loader. I'm sorry, Miss Jenny, said Kelly. It wasn't your fault, Kelly, said Miss Jenny. We'll get you back to the yard so the repairman could look at those wheels. I'm glad it's only your wheels, said Thomas. Me too, said Kelly. But he was worried. What if he fell over again and hurt someone? That night, the wind blew, and the rains pounded down. The repairman worked all night fixing Kelly's wheels. The next morning, the sheds were empty. Everyone had gone to work, except Kelly. The rain had stopped, but the wind was still blowing, and he was worried. Then Miss Jenny came to the sheds with urgent news. Isabella has come off the road at the quarry bridge, she said. We must rescue her at once. Kelly was still afraid he might fall over and hurt someone. Can't you send someone else? he asked. Kelly, there is no one else. Isabella's in trouble, said Miss Jenny, and we must rescue her. Isabella was scared. She didn't like teetering on the edge of the road like a seesaw. Soon, Kelly and Miss Jenny arrived. Isabella, are you all right? asked Miss Jenny. I think so, answered Isabella. Kelly had to remove the piano first. The wind blew and the piano swayed. Oh dear, be careful. Soon, Kelly lowered the piano safely to the ground. Now he had the hardest job of all, to rescue Isabella. Slowly, he started to pull Isabella back onto the road. The wind blew harder. Isabella began to teeter. Oh, oh! Kelly was worried. He stopped. What's wrong? cried Isabella. The wind's too strong, said Kelly. You can do it, Kelly, called Miss Jenny. You can do it. Kelly knew he couldn't let the wind stop him. He started his winch again. He pulled harder. And harder. Mind my paint, the cheeky truck cried. Isabella was finally back on the road. Phew. Well done, Kelly, said Miss Jenny. Well done. Thank you, Kelly, said Isabella. At last, Kelly had his confidence back. Isabella was on her way again. And Thomas could see that Kelly was happy.
was a gray, cloudy day on the island of Silver. Percy was taking Alfie and Jack to Kronk Station. Jack and his friends were going to prepare the site for a new repair shed. But rain had made the site a muddy, mucky mess. Mud can be dangerous, warned Miss Jenny, so remember. Safety first, said Byron proudly. And that means no carelessness, she said to Max and Monty. Yes, Miss Jenny, they clattered. <laughs> Jack and Alfie were having a wonderful time. Alfie liked mud. This was the muddiest mud he had ever seen. Mud! Glorious mud! Alfie shouted as he spun around. Byron was working very carefully. His cuts were straight and precise. Look at that, he chugged, a work of art. But no one noticed how carefully Byron was working. Max and Monty were still up to no good. Bust my buffers, cried Percy. What do you think of my trench, Oliver? Byron asked proudly. But Oliver didn't answer. He was too busy trying not to sink in the mud. <laughs> Byron was upset. He wanted someone, anyone, to say, well done. Max and Monty were still up to no good. Ready, go. Watch out, shouted Alfie. But it was too late. Max broke the water supply pipe. Water gushed everywhere. Suddenly, Alfie was sinking into a muddy hole. Help! he cried. I'll get him, clattered Jack. No, shouted the foreman. You'll get stopped too. A workman shut off the water. But there was no way Alfie could get himself out. Byron, Miss Jenny cried. Can you help Alfie? I'm coming, Alfie, he shouted. Byron could see Alfie was sinking in the mud. Grab my blade, called Byron. Alfie reached out. I can't reach it, he cried. Careful, Byron, shouted Miss Jenny. Careful, you'll sink too. But Byron inched closer and closer. And close. Miss Jenny was worried. I've got it, shouted Alfie. Hold on, cried Byron. Come on, Byron, Kelly whispered. Byron struggled. And pulled. And strained. Last, Byron pulled Alfie to safety. Alfie was happy to be out of the mud, and Percy was glad his friend was safe. Well done, Byron, he said. Yes, well done, said the foreman. Well done, shouted Kelly. Well done, shouted everyone. Byron was proud. He had more well dones than he knew what to do with. That night at the yards, Miss Jenny had stern words for Max and Monty. You'll be spending the next three days in your sheds, she said, and you should be ashamed of yourselves. You could have seriously hurt someone with your callousness. We're sorry, Miss Jenny, said Monty and Max, and they truly were.
Choose to work or play, we choose to work.